minutes of the press uh, this morning. Good morning. And we're taking a look at the national dailies. And we'll try as much as we can to make sense of it and to dissect it. And with me in the studio to do so, thankfully today, is public affairs analyst Shola Adigui. Good morning, Mr. Adigui. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for obliging us. Today we have you physically and not remotely. <laughs> <laughs> we are moving. We are making progress. <laughs> All right. We have a couple of papers for you this morning. Uh, but we're going to begin with uh, the Punch newspaper, and from there we'll move on to other newspapers. Already displayed there, thank you very much. Uh, workers protest picketing, ask government to clear a hundred, uh, 17 billion naira contract debts. That story is on page 21 of the Punch newspaper. And then we have oil field build, uh, bid round. Federal government may generate 2.3, rather, 0.17 billion naira from fees. That sounds like good news on page 22. Suspected herdsmen killed 22 in Benue, southern Kaduna attacks. That story is on pages 7 and 8 of the Punch newspaper. And we also have um, on the Punch newspaper on the front page, worship centers. Uh, JNI says PTF guidelines difficult and the Catholic faults a continued closure of the churches. That's on page two. We, the big story for the Punch newspaper is one that has bothered everybody uh, throughout the week. Another student raped, uh, killed in Oyo, Ikitihoka, defiled on pages four and five. And that's on the front page there. Uh, you can see at the top of the, to the right there, we have the figures, uh, national figures and global figures of COVID-19. We are at over 11,000 now, and globally we are at 6.5 million. Now, Amnesty International has asked president to declare rape a national emergency. And Aisha Buhari seeks speedy action on cases. Atiku Dabiri Erewa react. Now, Commissioner, uh, um, if you take that down, but Commissioner Kogi, Commissioner on the investigation for assault and rape, say police. You recall that story uh, that broke in the news. I believe Plus TV Africa also followed that story. One of the media houses that actually interviewed the victim. So this is moving forward to that story. All right, if you scroll further down, you see picture story there. Um, we can see some picture story of um, distribution of some sort of relief item to disabled persons. Now, Army arrests 24 bandits in Ondo Forest. That story is on page 9. Two health workers among five AKT COVID-19 cases on page 11. And the Federal Executive Council approves 1.6 billion naira uh, for second Namdi Azikiwe Airport's runway. 1.6 billion era. That story is on page 22. Now, Akpabio inserted 500 million project in NDDC 2017 budget. That's according to the Senate panel on page 14. Now, family demands justice over a radio presenter's death in church during childbirth. My goodness. That's on pages 4 and 5. And lastly, Oshomole should not be involved in a do governor. Uh, governorship uh, primary election. That's Obaseki saying on page 17. All right, let's begin. Mr. Debu, there seem to be so many stories uh, there this morning. Which one is catching your attention? Um, let me first start with the rape. It's horrible. I think and, uh, it's now becoming something that is of a regular basis and uh, a lot needs to be done. And uh, there, I think last week or two weeks ago, there was a survey that mm -hmm. uh, asked for guys to say yes or no if they were ever educated about rape when they were young. Okay. And uh, we discovered that uh, over eighty percent actually stated that they were not educated when they were so, young. So when you say if they were educated, what, what but they when mean? they were growing up, maybe their parents gave them this education okay. why they should not be involved in rape or what all those things. Oh. So we discovered that. Over eighty percent actually said they were not. Even someone like me, my father never sat me down for months to had that conversation with me or my mother. You know, so it's also it's across all the families, across maybe I don't across the world, but majorly in Nigeria based on the survey. So what that means is that a lot needs to be done from home. Mm. 
parents need to educate their children why raping is not good. It's you cannot, a crime. You cannot use your five minutes enjoyment to destroy the life of other people, most especially babies. About, I think it was in the last year, a 41 year old man raped a three month old baby. Yeah. Now, two months, three years, 12 years, you know, all sorts of things. You cannot use your own enjoyment. Like, I think it is not even normal for, a, for someone to look at a young guy, uh, a young girl, and think that, oh, I have interest in this, that the next thing is raping. I think it has to do with psychological effect too. Mm -hmm. If, I don't, know how, I don't know how Amnesty wants the federal government to go about the emergency declaration. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is a need for psychological test of a lot of people to be sure that everybody is mentally balanced in respect of that. So I think a lot needs to be done individually even if the federal government declare state of emergency, individually a lot needs to be done. We need to be educating ourselves regularly. The media houses also have a lot to do in respect of that. Even with just a minute or 30 seconds, just be educating people, it's just a matter of orientation. Mm. That is number one. Number two, what has always been the case of the victim, uh, the fate of the victim and the fate of the, uh, the accused. Culprit. Now, I, 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 um, I think it's only once I've heard, maybe this week or last week, that someone was sentenced to death. Yeah, 14 you, years, if it is uh, the case. Yeah, so if it, okay. So, apart from that, a lot of people have been arrested in the past. What has been their fate after being taken to court? Those that have been very raped, what has the government done about them? What, what is their fate? Some of them have been stigmatized. Mm -hmm. you get, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't come out to declare such in a public that they were raped by social person. Because you see, find a case whereby you coming out to say that publicly, a lot of people will even shut you down. You get, so a lot of things, we need to change our orientation, encourage the rape victim to speak out. A lot of people are in power today that they have raped a lot of people and because and because in, in Nigeria as it is, you coming out to say anything against that gov against that person in the position means that you are trying to run the political career of that person and they can shut you down in any form. So we need to encourage we need to encourage ourselves. Mm -hmm. Allow people to speak out. If they are raped, speak out. And action should be taken against action corporates, needs to be taken. irrespective of lawyers. We have are. a lot of we have a lot of lawyers outside there who are jobless. <laughs> no, these are cases for them. Mm -hmm. Try to get cases, go to court, then before you know it, you get what you want. Mm -hmm. So let me not dwell much on that. Um, the rape case because a lot have been said in respect yeah, of that. For, especially so, this week, it's been very overwhelming very, to very. talk about it in the news. Now, let me go to Edo state politics. Well, I've always known it's going to be the case. Oh, you knew? Yes, because uh, the issue has lingered on for a very long time, and now the two of them are on different, uh, what's it called, different sides. Mm -hmm. Now, the governor is asking the, the pre national president, is it national chairman now? The national chairman not yes. to be present mm -hmm. at the primaries. Yeah, the truth is, Oshomole is an industry citizen. And so, if he, yes, he is. He, he is an industry state citizen. He can't be in a do state. He, he can, can be or he can't be? He can be in okay, a do state. Okay, okay. If you want to exercise his right, he has every reason to do that. But the truth is, for morality's sake, you cannot be the judge. Because whenever you are present, you can easily cause a lot of, uh, what's it called? Mayhem, you can easily cause a lot of confusion mm -hmm. because of your presence. Mm -hmm. You get my point? So for me, I would say, or surely, just stay away. You should stay away. Whatever you want to do, whatever ad advice you want to give, whatever instruction you want to give to people, you can do that for wherever you want to do it. If uh, Obaseki thinks the presence of Shomole will create problem for the state, mm -hmm. he can sacrifice that. So, 
Edo State politics, I don't know how it's going to end. That's just the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it's going Neither to end. Neither do I. The primary. Mm. So I, on that, I think uh, then the one that also caught my attention is they are probably started 500 million projects yeah. in uh, 2017. Now, now that they have known, what is the next step? Good question. They inserted into a project. The, 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 the project was not executed because that is exactly what that means. It was not executed. The question now is, was the 500 million era released mm -hmm. for the project? If yes, then what step are you going to take? Or is it just for knowing sake for the public information? So <laughs> we need to look at that very well. Because we have always known that budget padding has always been the case for a very long time. But it's unfortunate if we have come to that space, you know, where it's almost like, oh yes, it's going to happen. Oh yes, that's the situation. It's, 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 it's unfortunate. It's just unfortunate to, I, it's unfortunate to have a country called Nigeria. Yeah, no, it's not, <laughs> no, it's not unfortunate we have a country no, called Nigeria. I, I, it's I, unfortunate I, that things are going wrong in our country. That's why, that, exactly, maybe. exactly. That's exactly <laughs> the point I'm trying to make. Because okay. if you are thinking of Nigeria now, anywhere, you are thinking of a corrupt nation anywhere and we have been crying right from the 1999 because we know that right from 1999 a lot of things have gone on i don't want to go before pre-1999 mm -hmm. a lot of things have gone on and every day every year a lot of people are crying out a lot of people are calling on the government to make things right if the government has sent us a lot of people uh have been, a lot of people have been imprisoned I, imprisoned I can tell you we would have gotten it right but it's like it's party party of a thing mm -hmm. Before you know it, yes, it goes to court. What is the what what is the end of the court case? Oju Zokalu was released. Why? Because the court that sentencing lacked jurisdiction. The man that did that was he not aware he lacked jurisdiction when he was doing that? Now the question now is: Is CFCC going? Is CFCC will rearrange Oju Zokalu? Mm -hmm. From what I heard, uh, Rotimi Jacob said yesterday, who happened to be the FCC lawyer, he said the case has been on for twelve years. So we cannot continue because if we have to restart now, it's going to take us another five Drag years. Drag on again. So in other words, let's even forget the case. Wow. So this, of course, we encourage a lot of people to go more. And we have to be sincere, just like Dino Melaye made mention of, that the people that are ready to take over the government, that are ready to, um, how did they put it that time? He said, the people that are ready to embezzle, mm -hmm. mm, they are more than those that are already embezzling now. And it is because the, the government has been taking corruption with kids' mm. glove. The culture of impunity, unfortunately. We'll move on and go to the nation newspaper in the interest of time. Um, it would be displayed on the screen. Uh, but before they do that, I could begin reading. Okay, done. Uh, airlines get set for during the 21st flight resumption. Uh, five airports cleared already. I'm sure so many Nigerians are excited about this. Federal government's OKs, 148 billion naira refund to Oshun, Ondo, and three others on page eight of the nation newspaper. Is a Yamu, four others to battle Obaseki. Um, that story is also on page five of the nation newspaper. Now, the big story, churches, mosques open in Kwara, Oshun, Kanu, and Bainwe. Now, Islamic Council urges caution as uh, the Christian Association of Nigeria faults advisory uh, to 55 years old and above to avoid worship centers because they are in the vulnerable group, actually, that age bracket. And then the figures, as you can see, um, already displayed there. And we have, if you go further down, I believe it would, students killed after rape again in Ibadan. You know, the same uh, very heartbreaking story. Ojikalu back home. Uh, you can see it's on the front page there. Uh, the mom of this student six arrest of mastermind uh, of that crime. Agency boss six castration of rapists. Okay. Well, find out. That story is on page four. And inside, Ondo begins tracing of 160 uh, patient, persons. Uh, Lagos prosecutes 2,249 offenders. Two Ekiti health workers test positive. Bauchi, deputy governor, also tests positive uh, to COVID-19. Uh, River State inaugurates team. Benway relaxes lockdown. Uh, Three-year-old positive in Imo. Wow, that's the youngest uh, we have known of so far. Osho once against uh, gathering. 
our COVID gets one billion naira from Olam, and more of that you find inside the nation newspaper. Lastly, House seeks to stop IG from deploying CVS, and the York Council's uh, courts reserves judgment. That story is on page 29 of the nation newspaper. Um, very quickly, if I may ask you, um, the big story for nation newspapers is uh, churches and mosques opening in Kwara, in Oshun, and even in a place like Kano, which we know is one of the hot spots in Benue. What's your thought? Well, um, personally, I'm not in support of churches and mosques being opened for now. If truly the figures we are getting is getting high every day, you know, that was yeah, over 11,000. Over 11,000 now. And uh, Kano being the third on the, uh, be the second on the list is also. Um, opening churches and mosques, then that means we don't really understand what we are doing. Yeah, it's a lot of people would have said that at least people are going now, they are going to the market, they are going to this and that. The truth is, if you go to the market, um, if you go to the market, do whatever you want to do, you come back and you can have your bath. And do. But when you go to church, the reason why people go to church is for prayer. People go to market because they need to buy food and eat. You can't just sit down at home. And, but if you go to church, you go to church for prayers. We need as much as possible to limit where people go to. As much as possible to limit where people to go to. If you look at the cases worldwide, 80% represent those people that are regarded as asymptomatic. Mm. You know, that was the lack symptom. Right. You get over 80 percent. It means they are carriers of this virus, mm -hmm. and they can easily spread it anywhere. The guideline for for the opening of the churches and the mosques: number one, washing of hand, washing of legs, washing of faces, cover your nose. Um, yes, sanitizer. the sanitizer, temperature uh, checker, and all those things. For the mosque, it's very easy for them. And I will tell you why. They normally do ablation. So the only thing that's required of them is to get the soap and ask members to put on the mask. But the church, they have never done that before. Mm. So now you're asking all those things to be done. The church must abide with it. And the reason why the church must abide with it, sometimes when you get to church, you don't know who you are going to touch. No, you don't know who you're going to touch in the market either, do you? Yes, you don't know. But you know I made mention of something, limits. Okay. Limits where people go to. Mm -hmm. People need food. Personally, I would have, I don't I don't know why the federal government actually relaxed this lockdown right from the beginning. We want us to stay back at home. They have announced that markets should be open on a certain day. I know Lagos was doing Monday, Wednesday, still doing and Friday, Saturday. still doing it. Mm -hmm. Now, people go to markets, they want to buy something. In my area, you go to any nearby shop to get those things, come back home. Now, you said people should start work. People are now going out. They are not using the nose mask. Even those that have the nose mask, put it somewhere else, and you just, for, just for the police not to arrest them, mm -hmm. you get. Now, the pedestrian bridges across Lagos, you see the number of people on that bridge every day. I asked someone, you've been going out, how have you been doing? He said, once I, come back, once, I, once I come back home, the first thing I do is to go to my bedroom. I don't greet anybody. I, all, I don't work. I ask them to open the door to light. You get my point? So it means we are going to have more problems, more cases mm -hmm. in respect of this coronavirus. So if the churches, the reason why the churches and the mosques are asking for the uh, uh, are asking for them to be opened is because they want members to start coming. The question is, for the past two months that we have been at home, mm -hmm. have miracles been happening or not? Have miracles been happening? happening or not? Oh, okay. Good question. Uh, is it that God has not been answering prayer? Is it that members have not been paying their uh, offering tight? Is it that not coming to church has collapsed the building? No. We need to think for wise and move in, forward. in respect of this, most especially when it concerns health issues. Mm. All right. I, I will beg that we we'll move on in the interest of time. Uh, 
because we are fast running out of that. Let's take a quickly look at airlines get set to open on June the 21st uh, around the countries, and five airports have been cleared already. What's your thought on that before well, we move on to the next well, speaker? From what we have seen so far, it's like the federal government is trying to open the economy fully. Hmm. So starting with five airports, they are the major airports, Port Harcourt, Imo, Lagos, Abuja, and Kano. Kano. They are the major airports, and they are the because they are mostly international airports. So apart from that of uh, Imo State, you get. So it's good, at least for those that are in other states that are yet to come down to maybe to a different places of business or work, they can transport. So what they need to do is they need to put in proper guidelines. Mm -hmm. Strict adherence. Then they ensure strict adherence. Now, what do I mean? Before you come in, make use of your nose mask, then the uh, hand sanitizer or you have your glove or mm. whatever you need to do. Ensure that is a social distancing cue before you board the plane. Then also the plane, the, gov the government must ensure the headlines fumigate the plane at every time mm. they land. So the people disembark from passengers and back from the plane because anyone can be a carrier. If That's you don't right. do the formulation at traffic night, there is a disembarkment there. It means that there is a high possibility for someone to sit on the same chair of a carrier before the left. All right, <laughs> it, it's a serious one there. Anyways, let's quickly take a look at uh, Tribune, which will be our last paper. Uh, we will just read out the headlines in the interest of time. Uh, it's already dis displayed there. Uh, Rivers or Shondo and two other states to get refund of 40, 49 billion naira spent on federal roads. Um, federal government won't honor future requests if, well, find out what the if is. And that's according to the uh, Federal Executive Council. Government kill nine, injure others in fresh Kaduna attack. And um, an edge 1.1 billion naira fraud. Court dismisses charges against ex custom boss uh, Diko. And the uh, AGF takes over prosecution of Taraba kidnap uh, campaign. Wadume. Interesting. Community policing takes off in Lagos. And that's on page seven. And Oshomole should stay away from June primaries, you know, Obaseki warns. Uh, and uh, still on on that, if you scroll up a little bit more, we'll find out okay. uh, all the matters there. Uh, appeal court reserves judgment in Oyo local government uh, leadership tussle suit, and that's on page three. Ninety-year-old uh, raped, killed in Ibadan. It's so heartbreaking to keep seeing this and reading this, you know, and talking about this. Uh, justice has to be done. And she was killed, she was raped and killed by suspected armed robbers. That's yet another life cut short. The story is on page six. Armed forces short of manpower uh, funds, according to Defense Minister. Mr. Debuyi, you have two minutes? Uh, not, no, no, not so two minutes. I think we've, I, I <laughs> think we've already talked more. Yeah, about. so. But the one that is surprising is none of the newspapers use the cut in budget uh, as head of state um, headline. Mm -hmm. whereby the national slam be cut down to 25, 27 billion, the education sector and the health sector. And so far, is it that it's not that important or not? I don't know. So mm -hmm. um, maybe let me just talk about that Let's because we've already talked about most of those things. Yeah. So let me just talk about that. The government, I think this particular government is actually not taking the health sector serious, despite Oh, the, that is happening. What is happening now? Now, it's not taking the education sector serious. They are more important. They are more interested in innovation of the National Assembly. If we are to, if 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 we better government spends that 25 billion on what is happening now, as in the COVID-19 testing centers, I am telling you, the figures would have gone far, far. A lot of people would have been would have been tested more than what they are doing currently. I can tell you, they would have secured a lot of ventilators, a lot of places would have been put in place for, for patients to be uh, isolated. You get, so the government needs to take 
Because I ask myself too, that what is the cost benefit of renovating the National, National Assembly? Assembly? If you are spending up to that 20, 27 billion, you only reduce it from 37 to 27. In other words, you reduce by 10, uh, just, 10 remove billion. just 10 billion. Era. And education, you cut that by 45%. So I don't really know what the federal government is actually interested in most. What are the priorities? You get the National Assembly, I think the National Assembly is even the priority. That is just the truth. Because there is a special budget of 125. 125, yes, for National Assembly alone. So if you are to add 27 to it, you are talking about 152 billion already for National Assembly in the next six months to spend. <laughs> I don't know where we're headed as a country. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we, we, we have to wrap it uh, here in the interest of time. Thank you so very much, uh, Shola Adebuye, who is a social commentator, for being with me this morning in this segment. It's a pleasure. All right, and that's where we'll call it a wrap here on Off the Press. Remember, we do this Monday to Friday here on Plus TV Africa. The time is always 8.30 a.m. I am Amaka Okoye saying please stay safe out there. Until all of this is over, it will be over. <laughs>